What's up, good people in the world? This is Dee Marie again, reaching out to you. I had a pretty exciting night last night, and it, it put something on my mind that I wanted to talk to you guys about. So here I am saying what's up. Um, so last night I worked for a school, right? I'm an educator. That's my career. I don't just get on YouTube and just start talking. Um, I'm actually a licensed educator in Illinois, and I work for a school called Tricochi University of Beauty Culture. Um, it's a really well-renowned school in the Midwest. It's kind of like the Yale of hair schools in the Midwest. So shout out to all my Tricochi family if you watch and appreciate the love. Um, so I was with all of them last night, you know, having a good time. We had our award ceremony. And I actually took home a very, a very important award to me. It means a lot. And I want to share with you guys uh, what it is and why it means so much to me. So this is my baby right here. Certificate of Recognition. I'm going to read it to you. Presented to Dina Boozer. That's me, D. Boo. Yep. In recognition for your dedication to excellence. Barber Educator of the Year 2016. It's pretty fly, right? I'm proud of it. And I'll tell you what. I... I've been in barber competitions, right? Won some awards. I've been written up in magazines and this thing and that thing and, and open the shop and close the shop. And I, I've, I've had all kind of really dope things happen in my career. But this is right up top. This, is, this, is, this has got to be one of the best. And I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why. Um, before I went to barber school, I read a book called Before You Quit Your Job by Robert Kiyosaki. And I went ahead and wrote it on the board because I want you guys to be able to reference this and get back to it if you want. The name of the author is Robert, last name Kiyosaki, K-I-Y-O-S-A-K-I. -I -I. If that name sounds familiar, it's because this man wrote a very popular book, New York Times bestseller list for many, many weeks or years or however it went, called Rich Dad, Poor Dad, right? Talking about his life growing up with two separate dads and how they looked at money and, um, and the pursuit of it and blah, 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 right? Very insightful, man. But before you quit your job, as it probably sounds, was a book that he wrote about entrepreneurship and what things people should probably know before they quit their job and go to work for themselves. Lots of great nuggets in that book as independent contractors, barbers, stylists, whoever else is watching this book. If you work essentially for yourself or are in charge of your own career, or looking to go out into the world and entrepreneurship, you need to read this book before you quit your job. It's an old one, but it's still good. Okay. One of the things he said in that book, and I read this book very early in my career. I don't even remember um, when exactly, but it just stuck with me so much. Was um, He was talking about as a service provider, if you work with your hands, right? I'm a barber. Clearly. So um, as a barber, I'll just use myself in ex as an example, right? I can only ever cut so many hours in a day, right? If I, if I just stretch myself as far as I can go, maybe I can cut 16 hours a day, right? And in those 16 hours, I can only actually get so many clients in. Maybe I do two, two an hour and I might take minimal breaks. So maybe I can do 28 haircuts a day. And how much ever those haircuts are ever going to cost me, maybe they're 30 bucks, so maybe I tap out at $540 a day, right? And then you continue to do the math from there. So the, the point is, if you're a service provider, you work with your hands, and you are actually personally doing the work that you're charging for, sooner or later, you're going to cap out. You can only charge so much, or you can continue to raise your rates here and there, but you're only ever going to be able to do so many haircuts. You're only ever going to get so quick, you know, no matter what, right? And, and that means that sooner or later, you're going to reach a pinnacle of your dollar, where if you are strictly behind a chair cutting hair and not doing anything else, sooner or later, you're going to reach a cap on your money, unless you continue to up your prices. But even then, you stay high level in a cap. Does that make sense? You're going to cap out sooner or later. What well, Robert Kiyosaki in his book says is to... In order for you to continue to grow, that what you have to do is take your skills or your in, take your take your take yourself through the eye of a needle. Now, how can a human possibly fit through the eye of a needle? Eye of a needle is super teeny. If hell, thread can hardly get through there. When I so so, how can a person take themselves through the eye of a needle? Well, 
figuratively, of course, right? He doesn't mean literally at all, but what he means is to pass on the information, right? Like you can't, you you yourself can't fit through eye of a needle. Of course, you'll never be able to do that. But what you can do is send information in in segments that small onto other people or onto other audiences and grow that way. Now, in that way, you can take the information that you have or the knowledge that you have, the gifts that you've been given, and you can give them to other people and then they can grow exponentially. But if you hold on to them and you only do them yourself and you keep all of your nuggets and your wisdom and your trade secrets to yourself, they'll die with you. But if you can send them on to other people, then you have no idea how far that information can go and how much you can grow and how successful you can be by sharing that information. Does that make sense? So to me, being an educator has always been more important than being a good technician, always. Being a good team mate has always been more important than being a good technician because clients don't know, the haircut between, don't know the difference between a good haircut and a great haircut, but they do know the difference between a good person and a great person. They know the difference between a good experience and a great experience. But your team around you also knows the difference between somebody who leaves when their time is over and somebody who stays a little while longer, cleans up, packs up the back boxes in the back and take them to the dumpster for an extra 15 minutes. They see that. They see the person who is not necessarily getting paid to do this thing or do that thing, but they're going to go and do it because they know it needs to be done and they're going to take care of the company and take care of their teammates around them. See, poor people had this mentality that I'm not going to do this unless I get paid for it. But think about it. You have to prove, you have to create value if you want to create success. Nobody's going to pay you to do work that they don't know that you can do. You're going to have to prove it somehow, right? And we always want to be paid for everything. We want to, well, they ain't paying me to stay over. They ain't paying me to do this. They ain't paying me to do that. Well, guess what? When a promotion comes up or when they think about somebody to recognize for putting in extra hard work, is it going to be you? No. Nah. And then you're going to sit back and say, well, I got passed over because such and so is a dude or such and so is white or such and so is this or such or well, she always did like him more. Maybe she liked him more because he helped out more. Maybe she liked him more because he created more value while you sitting in your car on lunch break smoking weed or or won't sweep up your own hair or can't be trusted with the keys or show up late or hung over, right? Maybe, just maybe, the reason you can't get recognized or, passed, or you get passed over for certain things is because you don't put in the effort first. You want to get paid for the effort. Well, let me tell you what. Effort comes first, then reward, then money. Effort, reward, and success, and then you get paid on the back end of it. Right? That's how these things go in the real world. You have to show and create value for the people around you before anybody's going to gonna give you some extra change for something. It's like me saying, make me a good hamburger, but I don't even know that you can make a good hamburger. So why would I pay you to make a good hamburger? I'm not just going to gamble my money away. How about you make me a good hamburger first? And then I say, you know what? He got a pretty dope hamburger. I'm going to pay him for the next one. That's how it really happens in the real world. But poor people have this mentality that we want to do, we want to get paid for everything first, and then we'll do it. That's not how it works. That's not how it works. You show up, you do the hard work, whether somebody's watching or not, because it's the thing to do, because it's the right thing to do, you create value for your team and for your students and for the people around you, your coworkers and your 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 clients. And then success comes. And with success comes money. But we're so busy trying to chase money that we don't understand that we need to create value in order to be paid anything more. So that's one of the reasons this award means so much to me, man. Because 10 years ago when I was sitting in a barber chair falling asleep because I was working at the post office. Then I was going to school. Then I was going to the shop afterwards. And I was home for about four hours a night. I read that book. And it told me that in order to be anything at all, to anything bigger than what was going to happen behind a chair, I had to pass my information on. And this award is recognition that I've done that, not only to the students, but to my coworkers and to the administrators that people see the value that I create. And I would suggest you be a person in your shop or your restaurant, or wherever you work, whatever you're doing, be a person that creates value without looking for reward. Reward will come inherently. It always does. It always does. But don't go looking for reward. Do it because it's the right thing to do. Do it because it's who you are. Because you're a hard worker. 
and you know this thing needs to be done and you are going to be the go-to person. You are going to be the one to take care of it. You do that first and everything else will follow.